Hi guys, welcome to Class Rock and Country Music Facts and Trivia. Appreciate you being here. Today's video is on the Eagles, specifically Joe Walsh. And how he says, uh, this Eagles uh, classic, that is still a challenge for him to play. Even before Joe Walsh joined the Eagles, he was deemed one of the best guitarists around. Using a hard rock edge with refreshingly funky predilection, uh, his work in the James Gang and Barnstorm placed him firmly at the forefront of American rock in the early 1970s and saw him tour with The Who and even destroy hotel rooms with John Belushi. Simply put, he was a star in his own right and already broken through the other side of fame when he joined the Los Angeles band in 1975. It was a master stroke when the Eagles hired Walsh, who replaced the outgoing Bernie Lennon. Lennon sorry. Not only was the guitar hero sick of leading a group uh, and writing all the songs, but his status seemed perfect uh, to replace the former Flying Burrito brother, who had enjoyed far greater success than any of the other Eagles before they formed, giving the group more confidence in their decision as they uh, last barnstorm effort. 1974's So What featured Eagles members Glenn Fry, Don Henley, and Randy Meisner. Uh, they knew there was chemistry. When Walsh joined, he was the final part of the puzzle in many ways. Allowing songwriter and vocalist Fry to uh, concentrate on rhythm guitar also meant the group could stick to having a twin lead six-string assault, with it quickly becoming apparent that Walsh was the perfect foil for Don Felder. The band's first album featuring Walsh, 1976's Hotel California, is drenched in a melodic push and pull between the worlds of fire and ice that Walsh and Felder represent. To the extent that Henley would later describe their convergence as a Dwayne Allman and Eric Clapton combined. Now, while Walsh is widely hailed as a man who qualified the Eagles to take the step up and become truly a legendary band, with Hotel California one of the best selling albums of all time, he has always been one of the more unassuming figures of his stature. He's even maintained that playing the title track, which features the two minute, 12 seconds long solo, in which he and Felder weave between each other is still a challenge to play. A surprising comment considering how many times he's played it and just how lauded he is on the fretboard. It shows that even the highly mythologized uh, greats are still human, no matter how many storied musical moments they lay down in the studio. Speaking to Telegraph in, in 2013, Walsh said that he was never grown tired of playing guitar solo in Hotel California, despite doing it literally thousands of times. He then revealed it's still a challenge. I really have to pay attention. I mean, I can't play it crappy, but I like to play it good. Looking back on that fast time when the band was more immense in the artistic flow state than they would ever be, Walsh explained that he and Felder had an empty slate after the singing and had been captured and they could do whatever they wanted. Uh, the pair agreed that they would make individual statements in the song's body and then come together as one at the end. This was an unusual move for them because as two lead guitarists by trade, they were regularly in competition, pushing, pushing each other uh, to outdo themselves. Yet, they worked as one for the finale of Hotel California, and it's no surprise it resonates most out of all the Eagles songs, mirroring the spirit of the heady era, and it was recorded. It was the astounding moment of digging deep within, so it's no real surprise that Walsh still struggles to play it. Moments like that when the universe fully aligns for artists do not happen often. I was, uh, and yes, Joe Walsh, great guitarist, and, and this is going to get off uh, subject a little bit, but I always loved uh, Joe Walsh's sense of humor, especially when, and I'm sorry, but especially when he's stoned. Um, he did a thing called Drew Carey's uh, Improv All Stars. I think it was on HBO years ago, and he was pretty stoned. And uh, he was the music talent for that, but they get him into some of the improv too, and he was funnier than the, than the comedian. I'm talking Ryan Styles, Colin Mockery, you know. He was funnier than them. I mean, it was so funny. Um, if you get a chance, YouTube does have that, so watch that. It's really good. All I got for you here, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Please don't forget to subscribe. Please like this video. You guys have a great day. God bless you. Pray for you.